Now, before we go any further, I'm going to add a sender receiver situation here just to clean up all these extra lines. So we'll add a sender here and rename this just to scale and then add a receiver, change that to scale. And now we can start dropping a few of these patches around just to clean up this mess. This is going to make it a lot easier to understand what's going on. Okay, with that cleaned up, we're going to do something totally new now. We're going to use a render pass. So to add one, let's go up to device. And then in render pass, we'll just click the default pipeline. And that'll create this set of nodes. And I'll just quickly break down what this is doing. So we have our camera texture up here, our device, the render pass, and our device screen input. So if we remove this, there's no signal here. And this device is actually this device object here. So if we were to grab, let's say, just this frost object, now you can see only that's rendered. And to make this more apparent, let's hide the background. So this is basically rendering only what we put into this scene object. So because device was set by default, that includes everything that's inside of this device, which is the entire scene. And a lot of power in this setup lies in this wire right here. For instance, if we just grab an add patch, we can brighten or darken this entire scene. So the final video feed is basically going through this single wire. So with that in mind, let's go to the library and type in distortion. And we're going to grab the texture distortion patch. And then we'll just drag that directly in. And the texture will be this scene render pass. And the distortion texture can be anything. And so in our case, we're going to use this shockwave animation. And hopefully we can just drag this directly in. Now you can see that shockwave playing out and distorting this middle area of the video. Of course, it's kind of squished because we're in a portrait mode here. So a quick and dirty way to fix this is to use some transformations. So let's use a texture transform. And for the transformation, we need a 2D transform pack. And that goes into the transform. And right away, we want to change the pivot to 0.5.5. .5. That will make the pivot directly in the center rather than in the top left. And then if we scale in the X from one to two, that basically stretches it left and right. And if we want this to kind of reach the edges, we can just increase it a little bit more. I think 2.5 and 1.5 might be good. So now you can see that shockwave kind of rippling out towards the edges. So already we have a really cool effect. Obviously we don't want it to loop like this, but we're off to a good start. So we need to trigger this when the scale of the scene is under a certain threshold. So in this animation shockwave, let's grab the current frame. So we can play this kind of manually. And we can just scoot over here. So let's grab a receiver and we'll grab that scene scale. And let's say if it's less than 0.1, we want to trigger this animation. So we can add an animation and that automatically makes a pulse right here. So as soon as we scale down, this will trigger, it'll play this animation and then we need a frame transition. And that just converts this progress into frames. 
which are whole numbers or integers. And this shock wave, it looks like we have 46 frames. And the first frame, let's see if zero works. So now we'll plug that in. And the animation is set to one second, but we have 46 frames, so maybe two seconds will be good. So let's test this out. As we scale down the particle start, and you can see this value here is 0.2. So as soon as we get under 0.1, that should trigger the animation. And there we go. We'll reset it and just test that again. Yeah, that's really nice. So with this scene render pass, we were able to add a really cool shockwave effect just with a couple patches and then a few more patches to trigger the actual animation.